on your bike in association with Safer Roads Humber, taking cycle safety seriously. This time, my cycling journey across East Yorkshire and Northern Lincolnshire takes me to the South Bank, where I will be exploring Barton and Scunthorpe. Barton upon Humber lies on the South Bank of the Humber Estuary at the southern end of the Humber Bridge. Recently named as one of Britain's property hotspots, it's been shown that house prices in this lovely market town rose almost 12% last year, with a staggering 76% increase in houses sold. The reduction in the bridge tolls and the government's help to buy scheme have influenced the rise, I'm sure, but the links to Hull, Scunthorpe and Lincoln help make it a popular place to live. And it's home to some famous names too. Crime author Ted Lewis, whose best-known work was adapted as the film Get Carter, Sir Isaac Pittman, who developed the Pittman shorthand method, and the great British Bake Off's Nancy Birdwhistle, all hail from the town. So, it's a good place to roam on my trusty bike, but what does the town have to offer those visiting? The Rope Walk is a regionally acclaimed art centre which houses galleries, a sculpture garden and a coffee shop serving delicious cake and coffee. It's also home to the Ropery Hall, a venue for live music, theatre and cinema. The Rope Walk is within a Grade 2 listed former rope factory, so it certainly has a fascinating history. Hello Luke. Hi Liz. <laughs> Nice to meet, to meet you. you. Just admiring all the gorgeous artwork here in the gallery. Yes, we've got a fantastic exhibition on at the moment uh, from a Scunthorpe artist, Letitia Thompson. It's been on for a couple of weeks now and we've sold quite a lot of it. It's going well. So the artwork, what we see here today, that's obviously available for your customers to purchase. It is, yes. Um, everything is available for sale and when people buy them, they can pick them up at the end of the exhibition. Um, the artist, oh. then we take a small commission from the artist and that's one of the revenue streams that keeps the gallery going. We are in a format rope factory. That's Not necessarily right. the gallery itself, but the whole building in general. It is, yeah. It's part of a former rope factory. Yeah. What do we know about its history, Liz? Um, well, I know that we know that the land was bought in 1801 by a shipping company in Hull, Halls, uh, and they purchased it so that they could make ropes on site rather than buying them from a third party, you know, typical Yorkshireman, they want to cut down, uh, they like pay in the middlemen, absolutely, like yeah, so I'm allowed to say that because I'm from Yorkshire, um, but they wanted to cut down their costs so they built their own rope making factory and the actual building itself is just short of a quarter of a mile long. Because it is quite um, a, But a it's only 30 foot wide, right. so, you know, there wasn't, when the factory shut in 1989, ideas came forward for what they could do with the building but nothing really sparked any interest so it's grade two listed as well right. so there's a lot of things you can't do with it right. um, and when we took right. it on it kind of uh, it, it worked it gelled and that brings me on to my next question what was the concept behind the rope walk as we know it today as an arts venue and right. a, a cultural hub in Barton yeah well when we took it on we've been doing community arts work in the town for quite a long time so using um, disused shops empty units to put exhibitions on or performance pieces and um, this became available and it was kind of a joke there was three of us came to look at it uh, myself and my partner who's a painter and he was looking right. for a studio and a, a good friend Tim who is our print technician here and, and uh, on the board of directors and Tim is also an artist so we were looking for a space um, and this was a bit ridiculous really because it was so big and it was just derelict quarter of a mile long building and within a year we opened the first fifth of it as an art centre and at the time, there wasn't a huge number of people lo living locally that were involved in the arts, but it's kind of attracted. It's a bit of a build it and they will come. And sort of. it's not hard work. <laughs> well, it's... yeah, I mean, we're open seven days a week. We started with three of us and we've got 34 staff now. Um, and so, as I said, we have good visitors numbers. Uh, and it's just become a bit of a, a cultural hub. We won Cake of the Year last year in North Lincolnshire. Wow. The, the great North Lincolnshire Bake Off, our um, carrot cake came first. Oh, my favourite, Liz. So, yeah, my so favorite. I guarantee, we need to try that. And obviously it's got carrot in it, so it's one of your five a day, really. It's authentic. <laughs> yeah. And finally, tell me one fantastic thing about Barton, Barton on Humber. 
Well, it's one of those places that it's small enough that you know a lot of people, but we've still got, you know, a leisure centre, a library, we've got three fantastic independent museums, and um, it's just got a really good sense of community, and there's nowhere I think you can go that has as many clubs and societies. Set in 110 acres of picturesque woodland, wetland and wildflower meadows, the Water's Edge Visitor Centre is another key attraction that cyclists can enjoy here in Barton. Opened in 2006, the award-winning centre is one of the greenest attractions in the UK and is home to an abundance of wildlife. Mallards and kingfishers can be seen nesting on the salt marsh plants all year round. Uh, at the moment, uh, the visitor centre is attracting around 170,000 visitors a year. A year? A year. Um, Fantastic. So, very good numbers. And as it's a free attraction, they can come, they can spend time here, they can park for free, they can come in for free, they can wander around the, the country park. Um, they may choose to feed the ducks, they may, may choose to eat in the cafe, but they could bring their picnics. It's a very good day out for very little expenditure. Uh, the children have a great time. Uh, and, and mums and dads can have a nice relaxing time. There's 86 acres of country park on this side uh, and there's a few more on the other side of the haven so altogether there's just over 100 acres and there are waymark paths and uh, lakes and trees and meadows uh, just, just to wander around and, and relax and uh, have a good time. A leisurely stroll. Yes. A leisurely stroll. And I believe, Margaret, the site is an area of special scientific interest, is that correct? We have two uh, sites of special scientific interest here at the minute. Um, Water's Edge at one point was one of the five worst contaminated sites in Europe. Right. Um, heavily contaminated with heavy metals and, and other very dangerous chemicals. It, that was all taken away and the lakes and things were, were created. Um, and sites of special scientific interest are where something out of the ordinary happens. So it could be plants that have made this their home that, that are unusual, or it could be a particular animal or bird or, or whatever. Ours are, are plants, uh, but we, we have two which it's amazing when you think what we came from only 10, 12 years ago to what it is now. You have a, a team of dedicated staff yes. within the centre, but I believe that you also pledge for volunteers to come and provide, commit their time yes. and develop the centre and make sure it, you know, it's running smoothly. How can people get involved as a volunteer here? So volunteers mostly work outside in the country park. Right and they, they work with the ranger and they help out from anything like putting out fat balls and food for, for the birds um, to maybe tidying up and making sure that the paths are accessible and that um, any trees that need looking after are, are, are properly cared for um, to maybe they'll be collecting the litter out of the bins but making sure that outside is, is in a suitable and safe state for the public to come and see so all the volunteering happens outside. We've got some nice um, cycle packs that you can pick up from here as well that, that, that give you places to go and you can spot you can see on the way so you may go out towards Thornton Abbey and do the cycle trip around there and you've got a beautiful abbey to see or you could go out onto the Isle of Axholm and, and visit Epworth the home of the Wesleys or, or you could come to Barton and do the cycle trail in this area and go to Wilderspin National School or you could come here there's so much to do. We're surrounded by history in this wow. area. Yes yes. Before I leave Barton I'm going to pay a trip to Welltides. They have over 75 years experience manufacturing a range of bicycle maintenance products. Producing everything from specialist lubricants and cleaners to workshop and consumer tools, Welltight has a purpose-built manufacturing factory in Barton. The team here are also proud of their links with the country's leading bike racing and display teams who use the company's products to ensure they're firmly out in front. 75 years of operation, what a fantastic achievement. Well, thank you very much. Tell me about the history of the company. Well, it started, my grandfather um, had a business in London where um, you could probably work backwards. 75 years ago was uh, the start, pretty much, of the Second World War. And um, we were Ministry of Defence packers, so we were filling a lot of greases, oils, etc., and sending them out in, in crates. And it was about a year later they came to us saying we, we've got a need for a puncher repair kit for the Jeeps. Um, so that's really where the link started. And we were manufacturing these repair kits quite a bit after the war. And 
I guess it was probably in the, the 50s, 60s, where we came out with a puncture repair kit for bicycles. And the theme which we like to say is it's all about maintenance. So everything that you need to do to maintain a bicycle, we pretty much do that. And we, we split that up into four areas. There's um, puncture repair or puncture prevention. Um, there's lubricants, there's cleaning products, and the fourth one is tools. We, we, we obviously have our, our own brand, Welltight, um, but we do manufacture a lot of other brands. Right. So I would pretty, pretty safely say that every single cyclist is probably using products which right. would come from this factory. David, thank you very much for inviting me here today. It's been a I've plan. got a long ride ahead to Scunthorpe very ah, shortly. Right, well look, you mustn't leave without me giving you the perfect product to ensure you get a Sounds great Sounds intriguing. Journey. Well, let me, let me go and get okay. one. This is our, our Jetvan Smart System. It's fabulous, absolutely fabulous. We, it's got everything here you need to mend your puncture. It's got the self-seal patches, which okay. no glue's required. Instantly put it on, completely airtight. Fab. We've got the nylon tire levers, glass filled to make right. sure they it's very strong indeed. And we've also got the Jetvan. Can be used to top up your air, or if you've got a complete flat, to, to fill it up. Completely. From, from no pressure right up to the pressure required. Am I okay to take this on my journey to Scunthorpe? Pop it in my you, kit you bag? You certainly are. Just in case. You certainly are, but I do hope you don't have a puncture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Luke. Well, I'm going to make my way to Scunthorpe now, so please join me in part two, where I'll be learning about a local celebrity, ringing the bells and enjoying a ride with a cycling club. On your bike in association with Safer Roads Humber, taking road safety seriously.